Welcome to lecture 28 of BIB 102 New Testament Survey. Today's lecture is going to cover the books of 2 John, 3 John, and the book of Jude. So let's get started with the book of 2 John. Concerning the introductory material, letter A, we know that this book was written by John the Apostle. Now, although John the Apostle does not directly identify himself as the author, it has been the traditionally held view that he wrote this for the last 2,000 years. And, if you remember, this was the Apostle who was considered the best friend of Jesus. And then letter B, this book was written sometime between or around AD 90. And John wrote this while living in the city of Ephesus. And then letter C, this book was written to the elect lady and her children. Now there is disagreement concerning whether or not this refers to a literal woman and her children, or it could refer figuratively to a church and its members. Now let's look at Roman numeral two, the purpose and importance of the book of 2 John. John wrote this for two primary reasons. The first was to encourage continual obedience to the truth in love. And then secondly, was to instruct his readers concerning the correct response to those who denied the Incarnation. Now that we've discussed the introductory material and the reason why John wrote this book, let's look at Roman numeral 3, the major teachings in the book of 2 John. Letter A, the first thing that John explains is that the truth of the Gospel abides in us and it is eternal. In these first three verses, John uses the word truth, which is the Greek word aletheia, four times. And each time it's referring to the gospel of Jesus Christ as being the truth. And here, two great principles concerning this truth are that he tells us that number one, it's abiding or it is indwelling in us and it is eternal, which means it gives us our assurance of our eternal security and being saved forever. And then letter B, John compels his addressees to love one another. Two important aspects about this love that John points out is number one, loving other Christians is a commandment. Now this commandment he mentions was given by Jesus and recorded in John 13, 34, when Jesus himself instructed his disciples to love one another as Christ loved them. Now a key point of this principle that John points out is that it is a commandment. It is not a suggestion or a good idea. It is something that each of us are ordered to do. And then secondly, he says that loving other Christians is displayed through our actions. True love is not shown by just a feeling or just by words and saying I love you. It is shown by our actions. Remember, love is a verb, not an adverb. Therefore, love is action, not emotion. And then lastly, letter C, John cautions his addressees concerning those who deny the Incarnation. And now the Incarnation is just a big word for Jesus Christ coming in the flesh. While John greatly emphasizes the love believers should have with each other, he also adamantly cautions them concerning those who denied that Jesus Christ truly came in the flesh. He goes so far as to even say that those, quote, believers who deny this cardinal doctrine should be avoided to the point where we do not even say hey to them, or he cautions that we might become partakers in their coming punishment. Well, now that we're done with 2 John, let's move to John's third epistle. In your typical order, it's called the book of 3 John. Concerning the introductory material, letter A, this book was written by John the Apostle. Just like 1st and 2nd John, the Apostle does not directly identify himself here as the author, but it has been the traditionally held view for the last 2,000 years because of the testimonies of individuals like Polycarp and Irenaeus who were directly and indirectly discipled by John himself. And then letter B. This book was written sometime between A.D. 85 and A.D. 90. We believe this was written while John was residing in Ephesus. And then letter C, this book was written to a man named Gaius. Now we believe this may have been Gaius of Macedonia. And we believe this because he was a traveler with Paul to Ephesus where John would later 
become a pastor of a church or a bishop of a church. If that is true, then this then may indicate that both John and Gaius knew each other at one point and possibly even ministered together. And then Roman numeral 2. Why did John write this epistle? Well, it was to applaud Gaius for his personal integrity and hospitality toward missionaries. Integrity and hospitality toward missionaries. Now, we'll find this out a little bit later. These actually, we call them missionaries today, but they were just Christians going around telling other people about Jesus. And Gaius displayed such high integrity and such hospitality to these individuals, John decided to write a letter to personally applaud him for his ministry. So now let's move on to room numeral three, the major teachings in the book of 3 John. Letter A, in verses one through four, because there's only one chapter in here, just like 2 John, John compliments Gaius for his godly testimony. The report of Gaius' godly testimony had made its way to John, and John says he was so happy to hear of everything that Gaius was doing that he actually prayed that God would allow Gaius to have both abundant success and abundance and health in his life. Then letter B, in verses 5 through 8, John explained that Gaius' hospitality toward missionaries helped advance the gospel. In these verses, John commended Gaius for his hospitality toward these missionaries and then explained that these same missionaries had testified of his charitableness. And John, finally in this little section here, proclaimed that his charitableness, his hospitality, had actually helped advance the gospel, which is a great application and teaching for us that you and I may not be the individuals going out into other cities and other communities and other states and other countries, but our financial help and our charitableness and our hospitality toward them still helps advance the gospel. And then lastly, for 3 John, John condemns Diotrephes for his actions, but commends Demetrius for his godliness. Here in this passage, John points out six character flaws with Diotrephes. First thing he says is that Diotrephes was arrogant. Secondly, he was inhospitable. Thirdly, he was slanderous. Fourthly, he was discontent. Fifthly, he was very divisive. And then sixthly and lastly, John just says he's evil. And because of Diotrephes' actions, John warns that Gaius and all Christians indirectly should not follow after men like him, but instead follow after men who are good like Demetrius. And Demetrius was an individual that has such an incredible testimony that, point, that John points out that all people bore witness to it. What an amazing example to us all that an individual and again, a challenge to all of us is that we would have a testimony that all people would give witness to it. And because of this last ver these last verses here, most people believe that Demetrius was actually the individual who brought this letter to Gaius from John. And now the last book that we're going to look at in today's lecture is the book of Jude. Roman number one, the introduction to the book of Jude. Letter A, this book was written by Jude. Jude was the brother of James, the same James that we see in Acts 15 and the writer of the book James. That means that Jude was a half-brother of Jesus, just like James was. And it is assumed that Jude was not a believer until after the resurrection. And then letter B, this book was written sometime between AD 66 and AD 80. And letter C, we believe that this book was written just to an unknown group. Now, there is not a specific locality mentioned here, but we could say that this letter was intended for Jewish believers scattered throughout the land because of the context and the teachings found within it. As far as the purpose and importance goes, Jude wrote this to challenge his readers to stand firm and contend for the faith. Jude actually says that he wanted to write them about something else, but then he decided to write this epistle to challenge them to contend for their faith because some had crept in and began teaching false doctrine. So now let's move on to the major teachings in the book of Jude. 
Firstly, letter A, Jude reminds his readers that judgment had fallen upon the wicked in the past. Now, because of the context of verse 4 here, this is particularly talking about the judgment that has and will fall upon false teachers. And Jude gives us three great examples of this judgment. The first example is the judgment upon the Egyptians prior to the Exodus. We commonly call those the ten plagues of Egypt. And then secondly is the judgment of certain angels who are locked in spiritual chains for whatever act they did. And some believe that this is probably a reference to Genesis 6, where the sons of God and that saw the daughters of men and took them as wives. And then thirdly and lastly is the judgment of Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding cities that indulged in their perverted sins. And letter B, Jude denounces the false teachers who had come in among them. Jude says that these false teachers were emotionally and physically motivated in their false doctrine, but they will one day meet their end. He even compares them to Cain, who killed his own brother in Genesis 4, Balaam, who taught the Moabites in Numbers 25 that they could use their women to seduce the Israelites and destroy them from the inside through idolatry. And then finally, Korah, who led a rebellion against Moses and Aaron and caused 14,700 Israelites to die in Numbers chapter 16. Yet in each of these cases, all three men met God's judgment for their false teaching, and so will those today. Jude's instruction to us concerning these false teachers is to confront them how Moses, or excuse me, Michael, the archangel, confronted Satan concerning the bones of Moses. He did not fight with him on his own merit, but instead, Michael the archangel rebuked Lucifer in the name of the Lord. In letter C, Jude references Enoch and the apostles to confirm that the wicked will be judged. Enoch prophesied that the Lord would one day come with ten thousands of his holy ones to execute judgment upon those wicked and ungodly people on the earth. And then the apostles prophesied that in these last times, those would come who are selfish and try to divide God's people. But we must always remember those individuals will always meet their end and eventually be judged. And then lastly, letter D, Jude exhorts his readers to spiritual growth, compassion, and evangelism. Jude tells these people, and all of us indirectly, to build up our faith. And he says that we, are, we build up our faith, we grow in our faith by getting into God's word and studying it. And then he tells them to not just build up their faith, not just to grow spiritually, but to have mercy or compassion on those believers who have doubts. And then thirdly and lastly, concerning the evangelism, he tells us to save others by snatching them out of the fire. Well, that brings us to the end of lecture 28. Only one more lecture to go for BIB 102 New Testament survey. I hope you enjoyed the lecture. If you have any questions or need anything, please do not hesitate to contact me.